dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Philip C. Franson put on Christ. So in Christ may Philip be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when Jesus appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they yet die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here today to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Phil Franson. We come together in grief. Acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, a resurrection. Will you join with me in reciting the 23rd Psalm that's printed in your bulletin? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These are the words from the Apostle Paul in a letter to Timothy. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, our righteous judge, will give to me on the day. And not just to me, but to all of you who yearn for the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from your labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you, especially this day. We praise you for Phil Franson, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon us and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home. Lord, as we celebrate Phil's life, may all the words of my mouth and all the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you. You are indeed our friend, our savior, and our redeemer. In your holy and precious name, we pray. Amen. Phil Franson was born in Brooklyn, New York on June 17, 1946. We always celebrated his birthday around Father's Day. His father was a Dutch immigrant in Brooklyn. His father's brother, Phil's uncle, was in the Dutch resistance movement and was killed in a concentration camp. When he, his father got to Brooklyn, New York, he worked very hard, tried to raise his family. It was a rough life back then as a new immigrant. And it was a rough time back then in the 30s in the 40s. And his first child, Phil's brother, was born as a, a pound and a half with cerebral palsy during the war. It was a very challenging time for the Franzen family. Oftentimes, his father was rough on the family and rough on Phil. And Phil always Long to spend more quality time with his father and get to know him better. But when he realized it was not possible for him, Phil chose to spend time and get to know his heavenly father. Phil was always active in the church, first Lutheran church and then Methodist church, and then United Methodist church. He served in many leadership capacities in all the churches he attended in New York, in Virginia, and here in Georgia. 
I would like to say that his gift was encourager and exhorter. He was a big part of Second Avenue here. He sang in the choir, served in SPR as a chairperson, and also served as a member of one board. He was always encouraging the May and encouraging many church members here at Second Avenue. Now that was big. We, when he ran into issues, he always tried hard to find ways to make things better. Make things better for him, better for his family, and for his church family. He made a difference in people's lives wherever he was. He served this country proudly in the United States Army as a young man, and he served his home state in Suffolk County in Long Island as a highway patrolman, and then a police officer later on. <laughs> Patriotic, loyal, dutiful, dependable. Now that was Phil. He loved Jane. Jane was one of many of his better choices <laughs> in life. He told us all about it all the time. But I love hearing their first date story over and over again. It happened in a church, and it was a blind date. A blind date in a church. Yes, it's allowed. And you may do that for your single loved ones. <laughs> Phil's sister, Jay, uh, Barbara, and Jay's neighbor co conspired together and arranged this blind date on Christmas Eve. They intentionally tore a page out of hymnal. Now, that, that's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> So that Phil and Jane, who were sitting next to each other, could share the hymnal together. <laughs> that hymn was Silent Night. Their 33 years of faithful marriage began on that silent night, under the candlelight. He was Jane's husband, all right. But most importantly, he was her best friend. They spent time together riding Harley, traveling, and enjoying children and grandchildren. Chris, Jimmy, and Corey were his own children. All the grandchildren and great-grandchild, they were his own. He was known to them as Beepaw, and he was the Beepaw, best Beepaw in the whole world. And he was an all-in Beepaw. He loved attending ball games, celebrating their accomplishments, rites of passage, enjoying birthday parties every holidays. Chloe, Sam, Chelsea, and Isaiah, your Beepa loved you and rooted for you and wanted the best for you. Now that was Phil. Phil was a middle child. I'm a middle child. I understand it perfectly. Oftentimes he sought attention rebelled, but he loved his brother Jarrett, always looked after him, and always advocated for him. And he loved his baby sister Barbara. He was the connector, he was the encourager, and he was the peacemaker. He always cared about Jarrett, who was born pound and a half with cerebral palsy. 
and Barbara, who had been on, on a liver transplant list. He always sought prayers for them. Phil readily shared his good news with others. And he readily shared his bad news with others. He was an open and a vulnerable person. And that's hard to find in men. We love his honesty, his openness, and his vulnerability. Now that was Phil. He had many vehicles in his life. And he loved his fine vehicles, and he took good care of them all. But Phil's finest vehicle ever created in the world was Harley. <laughs> he loved riding it with Jane on his back. And he, when he rode it, he was in hog heaven. He was always in hog heaven. He was also a member of Hog Heaven and an avid supporter of Hog, he uh, Hog Heaven, that is Harley Owners Group. <coughs> he was also a member of Steuben Association of Long Island, which promoted German culture and its heritage. He was active in the Exchange Club here in Rome. He started out as a uh, patriotism committee member. And then when he finally got connected with Exchange Club Family Resource Center, he poured his energy and his service into it. Tina, who's here today, posted this on social media. I remember the first time I ever met Phil. He described the beat he worked and talked about the value of building relationships with the community he served. He told me he wanted to do something active to help families and make a difference. He admired the work of Family Resource Center and was especially drawn to the way he focused, we focused on building relationships with the families we serve. Phil was a dedicated board member he was quick to help with events, gave generously, and was faithful in attendance. He helped us grow, helped us grow stronger, and he'll be greatly missed. Now that was Phil. He was the Staff Parish Relations Committee Chair when I first came to Second Avenue almost six years ago. He welcomed all four of us warmly, stocked our refrigerator, made sure we had toilet paper and paper towels in the midst of chaos of moving with two small children. So when I started a Sunday school class, I named it Happy Trails in honor of Phil. When he shared all kinds of stories of his highway patrol days in Long Island, they were very interesting stories. He always made me imagine him as one of the ship's highway pat uh, patrolmen in Los Angeles. <laughs> Phil was tall and handsome, as well as caring and considerate. That was Phil. He loved hanging out with his friends. Scotty was the one who got him to church here at Second Avenue. Scotty ran to him when he first, did, first visited Second Avenue and welcomed him and recruited him to choir for choir. Phil sang in the choir until he couldn't. He sang until last December. Ronnie and Sally, Scotty and Carol, Randy and Vicki, Terry and Nancy, Jim and Sheila, they loved eating out. That was their number one priority. <laughs> Playing cards, that was their number two priority. <laughs> loved bicycling, working out together, going to places. He was always willing, always happy, and always active. 
Now that was Theo. Just a few years ago, he shared a sentiment on where he was in life on social media. I want you to listen. After loving my parents, my siblings, my spouse, my children, and my friends, I have now started loving myself. I have realized that I am not Atlas. The world does not rest on my shoulders. I have stopped bargaining with vegetable and fruit vendors. A few pennies here and there is not going to break me, but it might help the poor fellow save for his daughter's school fees. I'll leave my waitress a big tip. The extra money might bring a smile to her face. She is toiling much harder for a living than I am. I stopped telling the elderly that they've already narrated that story many times. The story makes them walk down memory lane and relive their past. I have learned not to correct people even when I know they're wrong. The onus of making everyone perfect is not on me. Peace is more precious than perfection. I give compliments freely and generously. Compliments are a mood enhancer, not only for the recipient, but also for me. And a small tip for the recipient of a compliment Never, never turn it down. Just say, thank you. I have learned not to bother about a crease or a spot on my shirt. Personality speaks louder than appearances. I walk away from people who don't value me. They might not know my worth, but I do. I remain cool when someone plays dirty to outrun me in, a, in the rat race. I'm not a rat, and neither am I in any race. I'm learning not to be embarrassed by my emotions. It's my emotions that make me human. I have learned that it's better to drop the ego than to break a relationship. My ego will keep me aloof, whereas with relationships, I will never be alone. I'm doing what makes me happy. I'm responsible for my happiness, and I owe it to myself. Happiness is a choice. You can be happy at any time. Just choose to be. And his last one. I have learned to live each day as if it's the last. After all, it might be the last. That was Phil. I know he wants to live every day with more passion, more determination, more faith, more love, and more giving than ever before because that's who he was. That was Phil. And he wants to give, give it all. Be all in for life, for faith, for family, because that's what he did. He's been poured out as a libation. He has fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept his faith. For Phil Fronson, husband, a father, BPOP, best friend, a faithful church member, we give thanks to God this day and in the days to come. Happy trails. I invite um, family and friends, if you would like to speak, uh, just stand uh, where you are and share a memory or two. Introduce yourself. Hey, Brian. I'm going to try to keep this together. Uh, so I was the, I'm the first one to say I met Bill at the last time I was in there several years ago. And we were talking, you know, sharing what he could do. 
And one day he approached me and he said, I have this diagnosis of the, the cancer and then it's going to be very intense and invasive. I'd like for you to work with me. He was probably, and I don't mean to be funny, he was probably seven years old. Why? So we would start out having his, his discipline and dedication, determination and drive. We would grab these dumbbells and we would do these standards over and over and over and push ups and come back down. And we'd go outside and walk backwards up a hill and do push ups. So we did this four or five days a week leading up to the surgery. And I got to know Phil. There's a country song out a few years back. And so a man's taking his daughter fishing. She's a little girl. And they're sharing stories and the song's called She Thinks We're Just Fishing. Mm -hmm. So I, we got this. He was so happy when the waves won. <laughs> it makes me keep my vehicles um, <laughs> like in permiss what you call it, uh, what's the word for uh, having a car but you don't want ever get no dirt, dirt spots on it. <laughs> it got me about like this. <laughs> if I come out to their house, <laughs> my car is going to be out to be clean, our trucks so might be as clean as his car. <laughs> That's good God in prayer. God of us all, your love never ends. 
when all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you, O God. All that you have given us is yours. As first you gave fill to us, now we give fill back to you. Receive fill into the arms of your mercy. Raise him up with all your people. Receive us also and raise us into a new life. Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Phil. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own foe, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of light. Now we transfer his membership from Second Avenue United Methodist Church to Heavenly Kingdom. Praise God. And in his name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
God. Not the peace the world gives. The peace that Jesus gives. Only Jesus gives. Surround you this day and in the days to come. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.